Hi again everyone, Dr. Tom McNamara here for our course in College Algebra. In our previous video we had discussed combining functions using the operations of arithmetic. So after uh, going through that video and working through the examples, you should be able to add two functions together if I wanted you to find, let's say, f plus g of 3. Okay, you have a function f, you have a function g, you can make a new function f plus g. And we also saw an example of subtraction and multiplication and division. Well, there's another operation you can do with functions, and that operation is function composition. The idea is that you use the output from one function as the input to another function. Let me show you a quick example of a scenario where this idea comes up. So, I want to convert uh, 50 degrees Fahrenheit to the Kelvin scale. Uh, Kelvin is the unit of measuring temperature in the SI system, not Celsius, it's Kelvin. Um, and absolute zero on the Kelvin scale is indica indicative of no movement in any molecules at all. So you can't get lower in temperature than zero Kelvin. That's why. They call it absolute zero. Okay, so we got 50 degrees Fahrenheit we want to convert to Kelvin. Okay, so basically, to convert to Kelvin, the rule is this. Okay, I, I left off the decimal points there, so, but this is the basic idea. You take the Celsius temperature and you add 273 to that Celsius temperature. Well, the problem here is we don't have the Celsius temperature, we have the Fahrenheit temperature. Well, here's the function that converts Fahrenheit to Celsius. Okay, so this rule takes a Fahrenheit temperature, gives you a Celsius temperature. This rule takes a Celsius temperature and gives you a Kelvin temperature. In other words, we use the output from this function as the input to this one. Okay, so let's go ahead and actually finish off the problem. So if f equals 50, then c equals 5 ninths, 50 minus 32 equals 5 ninths times 18. Cancel out the factor of 9 that is inside the 18, and we get 10. Okay, so 50 degrees Fahrenheit corresponds to 10 degrees Celsius. And 10 degrees Celsius corresponds to 283 Kelvin by plugging the 10 into this formula. Okay, so uh, a simple example to understand why we would even need to talk about this concept of taking one function and then using the output from that function in another function. Well, we got it right here. We actually have a special notation for this operation. It's a little open circle between the two functions. So you might read it f circle g of x or f of g of x. And the output g of x is used as the input for f. In other words, we take x, we put that x, that input value, into g, and then whatever we get out, 
we use in f. So in other words, the function that is closest to the input variable goes first. Let's do a couple quick examples where we use the function notation. So, given f of x equals 3x plus 1, and g of x equals x squared minus 5, evaluate each number 1, f of g of 4. Okay, f of g of 4. So, first thing to do, g of 4, figure out what that is. Now, of course, we remember how function notation works, right? This is a rule telling you what to do with the input variable to get the output variable. So this rule says whatever the input is, you take it and you square it, and then you subtract 5. Uh, so if I take 4 and square it, I get 16, minus 5 gives me 11. And now, what I'm supposed to do is take that 11 and put it in F. Okay, so the 4 goes here into G, and then the output from that operation goes into F. F of 11. Okay, and that gives us... Uh, 30, oh, 34, right, because 3 times 11 is 33, plus the 1 is 34. So that is our output value there from that composition. Let's do it the opposite way. G of F of 4. Okay, G of F of 4. Now, function composition is what we call a non-commutative operation. Typically, order matters. When you add numbers, order doesn't matter, right? 3 plus 5 is the same as 5 plus 3. You can switch the order and get the same result. Most other operations, the order matters. So it's so unusual that the order doesn't matter. In addition, we give it a special name. We call it commutative. Addition satisfies the commutative property because you can switch the order. Here, I bet we're going to get something different if we do the composition the other way around. Okay, so, we're applying f of 4 first. So, this gives me 13, right? 3 times 4 is 12, plus the 1 is 13. Then I take that 13 and I use it in the function g. That says to square and then subtract 4. So I take 13, I square it, 169 there, minus the 5 is 164. Okay, notice two different outputs. When I did f of g of 4, I got 34. When I did g of f of 4, 164. Okay, so typically order matters. You're going to have to be careful when you do this function composition to make sure you use the right function first. It's the one that's closest to the input that goes first. Okay, so in those examples, we were using variables, or sorry, in those examples, we were using specific numerical values. You can also play this game with variables. You could do f of g of x. So in this case, g of x is going to be used as the input to f of x. Now, g of x is x squared minus 5. Now, this is when it really pays off to think about a function like this. If you go back and look at the videos earlier in the playlist, like the first or second video, we talked about function notation, saying that whatever you put here in the parentheses, you also do here. Okay, so whatever our input is, we multiply by 3, and then we add 1. 
All right, and that gives us three x squared minus 14. Okay, the reason I have the minus 14, well, I distribute three x squared minus 15 plus one gives me minus 14. Okay, and uh, we could even play a game kind of like this. We could do f of f of x. Compose a function with itself. Okay, so we use the input 3x plus 1 inside the function f of x. And we get this. Okay, so you take x, put it in f. It spits out that. You take that, put it in f. Now when I say put it in f, well, the rule for f tells you what to do with the input, right? It says multiply whatever you're given by 3. We were given this, so we multiply by 3, and then add 1. That's why we get a 4 here, because we distribute. Oh, wait. 9x, sorry. That was, uh, had to multiply the 3 is 2, right? So we get 9x uh, plus 4 right there. And you could even do, uh, that was the fourth example. You could even do something like this. f of f of g. Let's throw in some other things here. f of f of g of uh, 3. Okay, well, first thing to do, figure out g of 3. Easy enough, 3 squared is 9, minus 5 is 4. Figure out f of 4, 13. Figure out f of 13, right? Notice I'm kind of working my way out here. The 3 goes into g. It gives us 4. The 4 goes into f, which was the next function down the line. It gives us 13. The 13 goes into f, which is the next function down the line. And uh, we get 40, right? Because f multiplies by 3, then adds 1. So the result of all those compositions is 40. Okay, so you can chain multiple functions together if you want. So a fifth operation that you can do with functions. If I give you two functions, you can add them, subtract them, multiply them, divide them, or compose them to get new functions.